This talk is about aversions. And when I use the word aversion, I mean something that's inside your head, like an emotion or a verbal argument, that tends to make you avoid something or at least find it unpleasant. Cool? That's an aversion. So for example, I have an aversion to getting hit by cars. So far in my life, this has been extremely useful. If you don't have this aversion, I recommend it. <laughs> um, but on the other hand, there are some aversions that are clearly unhelpful. Right? Like somehow, I've never heard anybody say, man, it's a good thing I was scared out of my mind while I gave that TEDx talk. Whew. So, just to see if you might have some unhelpful aversions, I'm going to try and name some common ones. Okay? And think about if these are things that you procrastinate or find unpleasant. Here goes. Homework. Grading homework. Um, singing. Dancing. Public speaking. Uh, asking someone on a date. Math. Taxes. Exercise. Programming. Debugging programs filling out forms, dealing with bureaucracies, talking to strangers, calling friends you haven't talked to in a while. What are you going to talk about? Uh, um, applying for a new job, applying for college, applying for funding, accepting compliments, giving compliments. OK, please now raise your hand if I have named at least one thing that you either procrastinate or find unpleasant. Go. OK, that's approximately 100% of the audience. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is a well-practiced list. Um, and that kind of sucks, because there's, you know, a lot of those things I just named are useful, empowering things that you can do for yourself, or people you care about, or your career, right? Like if you want to start a nonprofit that teaches people to build uh, solar panels that tilt with a bottle of Coke, you might need to fill out some forms to become a nonprofit, and then you might have to talk to some strangers to get them to use it, right? Or if you want to build a an a like atmospheric plasma measuring space wire, which I'm sure often you think about. Uh, you might have to debug some code in your software, and that can get frustrating, uh, and that sucks, right? But here is the good news. <sighs> some things feel like that, but for every one of those aversions I just named, I know someone personally who used to hate doing that thing who now actually likes doing the thing. So you can be you can change which cat you are. Okay? Um, and the nonprofit I co founded during my PhD in mathematics, which has nothing to do with mathematics, uh, is very interested in how that works. How can we reliably reproduce the phenomenon of overcoming an unhelpful aversion on purpose? Yeah? And you know, of course, there are these maxims like face your fears or don't sweat the small stuff. And, you know, sometimes that works. But I claim that in today's world, we can do much better. Uh, there's a technique that I developed called aversion factoring, which I now teach at our rationality.org workshops, which basically involves taking your aversions and then breaking them apart into smaller pieces and then solving those pieces separately. Sounds simple enough, but to solve the pieces, there are some tricks you need, which are a little bit much to actually describe in just under 20 minutes. But I'm going to try to tell you guys a story that has been carefully selected among all true stories to have the highest density of tricks per unit time. OK? So here goes the story. My aversion was to climbing trees. I did my PhD in Berkeley. There are a lot of trees there. 
and I saw a guy climbing a tree, and I thought, why is that guy climbing a tree? What's he doing up there? And I thought, okay, let's be charitable for a minute. I guess he could be getting exercise. Um, trees are everywhere, so it takes less time than going to the gym. <laughs> and trees don't charge membership fees. And, you know, maybe he's having fun. Huh. Maybe I should climb trees. Yeah, I want to do that. I was, so I was inspired, right? Like, Ted is supposed to inspire you. So I was inspired, and I climbed a few trees, but then a couple weeks later, not so inspired. Just didn't keep it up. You ever had that happen? Yeah. Okay. So what do you think is the first question I asked myself at that moment? I might ask, what's stopping me? Right? But the first trick in this story is that is not what I asked. The first thing I asked myself is not what's stopping me, but is anything motivating me? Okay? This exercise that saves time and money and fun, do I care emotionally about any of those things? Turns out a lot of times we don't. Turns out this time I did. Okay? But that's an important first step. So realizing this, then I asked myself, okay, what's stopping me? And trick number two is to break the answer to that question down into smaller pieces, which you can then think about separately, one at a time. And I realized two things. One, danger. Duh. Turns out I don't want to break my leg. And also, dirty-looking clothing. I would climb trees, then look dirty, then eat dinner in a cafeteria where I wanted to meet new people, and I didn't want to look dirty. So, now the question becomes a cost-benefit analysis. Right? Like, is that good stuff worth all that bad stuff? Right? Nope. Nope. That is not the question I want to ask. Trick number three in this story is that I want all of the benefits without the costs. I want to solve those problems so that I just don't have to pay that cost. So, for the danger, I decided to train my reflexes. So I got in some low branches and trained the reflex of catching myself if I started to fall. Did that for a while, got pretty good at it. And I also resolved to climb in ways that were hard and not high. So I'd set little like mathematical climbing puzzles for myself, like go around the trunk and you can't touch that branch. And you have to have positive even integer winding number about the union of the branches, because I'm a super math nerd. <laughs> and that made it more fun too. And as far as I was concerned, I had eliminated danger. Problem solved. Okay, next problem. Dirty looking clothes. Well, it turns out. I had been wearing khaki pants, light-colored pants. So I bought jeans. And it turns out you can climb trees in jeans, and people can't notice. And you may be able to notice that you can't notice that I climbed trees in these jeans recently, since I washed them. So bought jeans, problem solved, clothes don't look dirty anymore. Now tree climbing's awesome. It's better than before. It's safe. It's clean looking. So I'm really into tree climbing for like a few months getting lots of exercise. And that was great. But then one day I noticed, you know what I haven't done in a while, is climb trees on the way to work. That's when I normally climb them anyway, right? I'm saving time. Trees are there. Here I go, up the tree. But normally, I wasn't climbing them anymore. So I thought, oh no, what is stopping me? And this time, I couldn't figure it out by just thinking about it. So my question for you now is, how could I figure out what's stopping me given that I couldn't figure it out just by thinking. It's going to blow your mind, okay? What I did to figure out what I might not like about tree climbing was I climbed a tree. I know. And what I did was instead of paying attention to what I enjoyed about climbing the tree, which I normally did because I'm trying to enjoy myself, I instead was mindful. That's why I call this a mindful walkthrough. I was mindful of the things I might not like about it. And I've since learned that this technique is taught in courses on mindfulness-based stress reduction, which is like super well studied uh, nowadays. So I did my mindful walkthrough, and I noticed one thing, only one thing, which was icky hand feeling. For the five minutes between coming down from a tree and then walking to my office, wherein I would promptly wash my hands. There were five minutes there of feeling icky. So, 
How did I solve that problem? I could wear gloves, right? Or buy hand wipes, hand sanitizer. Turns out, didn't do any of that stuff, OK? The way I solved this problem was markedly different from the way I addressed the other problems. This time, I decided to use the get over it. You can, you can use it. Yeah. I wanted to press the delete button on the icky hand feeling. So uh, what I did was something I now know is called exposure therapy. I went outside, and I found some mud, because mud was less icky than tree sap, and therefore easier to start with. Found some mud, stuck my hands in the mud, sat down. <sighs> OK. And what I did not do is try to block out the feeling of the mud. Because what I want is for my whole emotional brain, my whole limbic system, to recognize that there is mud on my hands right now, and that that's not so bad. Icky. It's sticky. It's just sticky now. And within a few minutes, my sort of icky feeling dropped from about a 5 to a 3 on a 10-point scale. And that was victory. I made progress. And then after that, I threw in another technique, which I'm going to call a big picture reframe, which I've since learned is very commonly used in cognitive behavioral therapy, another very well-studied form of uh, psychology intervention. And I thought about the important things in my life. I thought about, OK, family, not muddy. OK, school, not getting kicked out of that. Good. Friends, can't see me because I've chose this location carefully. Music is still going to sound good later. Mo Iron Man's coming out soon. Unrelated, right? Just not, there's no causal arrows from the mud into Iron Man. And that's awesome. OK, that must be why it doesn't matter very much. Cool. So then the next day, I did the same thing, but with real tree sap. Threw in a little feeling of like, hey, you know what? Icky hand feeling. That's the feeling of outdoor adventure. Hmm, that's what that is. And what do you know? Away goes the icky hand feeling. Then I can climb trees and not feel icky and be safe and not look dirty and get free time-saving exercise that's fun. Whew. And it's awesome. OK, and I still do it all the time. So that's my story, except for one important question. Why did I not use exposure therapy on the fear of danger or the worry about looking dirty? Because I could have. Actually, my mother trained herself not to be afraid of heights by first standing on a book and then freaking out a little bit. Then she stood on two books, freaked out a little bit more, then a footstool, then a chair, then a step ladder, then a real ladder. And then six months later, when I got back to visit, she was on our roof putting shingles on it. She's awesome. Yeah, so why didn't I do that to my fear? And the reason is trick number five. I guess I didn't mention trick number four was the mindful walkthrough. Trick number five is to ask myself, is this aversion pointing to a problem in the world outside my emotions that I think is worth solving? If the answer is yes, let's solve the problem. If the answer is no, let's solve my problem. OK? So that's basically the end of the story. And in summary, I would say trick number one, before asking what's stopping you, ask yourself, what's motivating you? Is anything motivating you? Yeah. Number two, if the answer is something, maybe something is stopping you. And when you wonder what that is, break it down into smaller pieces so that you can think about them separately one at a time and solve them. And you can put them in a diagram as well to sort of communicate to your intuition that aversions are decomposable problems, just like almost everything else in the world. Number three, solve some of the problems. Number four, do a mindful walkthrough of the activity to see if you actually solved all the problems or if there might be something you forgot. And number five, if any of the aversions are not really problems at all, you can press the exposure therapy button and make them go away. Cool? 
So now you might be wondering, OK, how generally does this work? Can you just use this to train yourself to climb trees? Well, actually, no. I've taught this to hundreds of people. And it works very generally once you're trained in it. So for example, let's say you have an aversion to talking to strangers. Well, once you break it down, it breaks down differently for different people. But for example, it could break down into all you need is a combination of skills practice with the, oh, that's me. That's me in a tree. Unrelated. <laughs> um, when you're talking to a stranger, you might need practice with the words that you use to start conversations to get interesting ideas from the strangers. And you might just need a little bit of plain old exposure therapy to train your emotions that it's not really such a big deal if a conversation with a new person falls flat because you might never talk to them ever again. It's okay. Or maybe you hate math or programming. Yeah, but maybe, you know, it breaks down different for different people, but if you, if you take it apart, do a little bit every day on your own terms, not someone else's, you might be able to find a way to make it fun for yourself and then opens up a world of career opportunities that you could not have enjoyed otherwise. There's so many opportunities in life that we don't take because we think we couldn't enjoy them just because we don't yet. Even though all those things I named at the start, from math to taxes to asking people on dates to bureaucracies to filling out forms, all that stuff is things that I've personally known people to systematically train themselves to enjoy. Yes, I know people who debug code and like it. So, now, you might be wondering, why do I care so much about other people's aversions? And the answer is something called the effective altruism movement. See, there's a big world out there with lots of problems that it needs us to work on. And some of the steps along the way might be stuff that makes us nervous or annoyed or even bored. But today, we have decades of history in cognitive science and experimental psychology accumulating and testing strategies for changing how you think and feel about things. You can hack yourself. And I think it's about time we all use that knowledge to overcome the age-old problem of scary, annoying limitations. I think we're ready, and I think we can do it. Don't let your aversions hold you back. Just take them apart. Thank you.